Hello, Room of the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligent briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all over the world. This is episode number 359. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake. I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Well, we just got back, folks, from Diggins and did a little walkthrough with Mike's uh, phone so he could show you what it looks like over there. Um, we were able to get some loads of chairs and tables. We'd just been taking our truck when we go to Springfield and loading it up and bringing it back and uh, give you an idea of what it looks like and what it's going to look like. We kind of took over some things to um, show you what the plans are when we get it decorated. So I'm, my goal is to uh, make it where everybody just feels at home yeah. and feels welcomed. And uh, Well, I, I just, have determined after bringing the first 40 chairs from Sam's, I'm going online and ordering the uh, the other 160 <laughs> and letting a freight truck bring it. We'll just they'll just park it out front. And we'll unpack it that way. That was that was that was interesting trying to get all those back from Springfield. Well, I still think we can get the tables because they're yeah. not that hard. We can no, slide them tables back are in. easy. Um, but it's we're so excited about it, guys. It's looking forward to it. Um, it's hard for me to balance that with what you see in the news. Almost. You know, every place you look, Christian news, regular news, uh, they're talking about the inflation, uh, they're talking about the food shortages, talking about war, World War Three, and things. And um, I don't know if I, my excitement over this conference center and, and getting to see all you folks is, is overriding um, my sense of what's really going on, but I, I just have excitement in my heart about what God's getting ready to do. Uh, and, you know, as I was thinking about that this last week, I thought, God, am I missing it? Because I, I just am sensing you're going to do s miraculous things. And uh, what he reminded me of is uh, Revelation 118. It says, um, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. I mean, and have the keys of hell and of death. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute, what that, you know, means for Christians. And um, But I've just been so excited about getting the conference center ready. I mean, we it was some work, but we had a ball just getting that floor scrubbed, and, and then I put wax on it. And it's looking plenty good enough because we don't want to put a whole lot of effort into it because about next spring we're before the next conference after the fall we'll be replacing that and it'll all have the same flooring throughout but i thought it looked fine i mean we got yeah. tables and chairs in there and i um redid the tops laminate tops on uh, a couple of things that were left over there and cleaned them up so we'd have extra uh room for drinks and um, coffee things like that and then we're going to take a whole lot of what's in Seymour over there. Um, we I took a lot over there just just to make it look pretty so yeah. you could kind of see what we've got planned. And, and just to give everybody a heads up, last week we, uh, we sent out an email blast to everybody uh, that we had in our database that we had an email on uh, about the conference. And uh, we have already had 162 people register. Uh, there's 18 seats left to that registry. And then that doesn't, we, we already planned out the seats for the people that are around here. Yeah. Um, and right. so it's it's filling up quick. I, th I tried to think of some people on that I would have an email with that might not have got that. So I've been trying to send that out. And uh, But to register, you just simply go to the KIB site mm -hmm. and underneath conferences, there's only one up there when you, when you do the drop down menu. It'll be the Preparing the Remnant Conference. There's a link there where you can register it with Realm. Later, we didn't get uh, have a chance to do it yet, but we're we're going to list motels, uh, the RV parks. Uh, the, there's a bed and breakfast yes, not too far Rogersville. up the road. There's there may be another one in, in, Marshfield. in Marshfield, which is about 12 miles. And there's a Holiday Inn Express in Marshfield. Yeah, that's Here at a nice Seymour, one. There's a uh, American uh, Inn, which is a more of a budget motel, but it's still clean. And uh, there's also they just opened an RV park just like four miles down the road in Fordland for those of you who are that like to do the RVs. And then there's all kinds. Of, I mean, Springfield's about 25 miles, yeah. and you, you'd have your pick of their all Hampton Inns, all of them, yeah, Drury and a whole bunch of them up there. 
And so, um, and what else was, oh, people were asking if children were allowed, and they're absolutely allowed. I can't wait to meet the kids. Uh, We're not going to have children's services. They'd have to sit with their parents, but we are going to prepare totes, a tote bag with all kinds of activities. It's hard for kids to sit that long, and so that way they can... They can have. Yeah, I think things you and Steffi are looking forward to putting those together. Yeah, too. we're we're just really looking forward to everything, and can't wait to get in there and and cook. And it's going to be good. I am going to fix a couple of items that aren't the healthiest in the world, just because we're it's conference. It's well, and it's after. It's right close to the Feast of Tabernacles. The yeah. reason we want to go past the Feast of Tabernacles is a lot of people all make plans for that and. And some people go camping and things, so we put it the the week after that. Um, but I am going to make a buttermilk sheet cake. It's a chocolate cake that is one of the most moist, delicious cakes. And I'll put organic ingredients in it, but if you're wanting to save calories, I'll have some other stuff there. <laughs> yeah. We, we can always do the charismatic thing of rebuking the calories, in the, but that doesn't always work. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'm I'm trying to do as healthy as I can, but going to have lots of good stuff yeah, and we've she's already been doing some dry runs on some of the recipes that she yeah. uh, that and so far the ones that she has done it's going to be good yeah i'm going to do a french toast casserole we checked that out this last week to see how it was i made homemade bread and then let that dry and then made it into a french bread casserole that i found a recipe for and it and it was good and we didn't even use real butter because i have trouble with dairy i have to limit it sometimes and so but with real butter real organic butter i think that thing's going to be a winner we've got um, chicken sausages we're going to have with that and so the breakfasts are going to be good we're going we're going to do the bigger meals at lunchtime and then we'll do the lunch type meals like soup sandwich whatever for for supper um that's that's kind of the way we eat anyway because we the older we've got it, it seems better if if we eat most of our food uh, before that that last meal yeah um but i'm so looking forward to it i just i just can't wait and it's just three months away and so you know and everything's just right online god's been so good thank you guys yeah. our partners my goodness have went beyond anything we could have ever uh asked god for yeah. and yeah, mike spalding and i were talking the other day and and uh, he saw how quickly the thing had just about sold out and everything. And I said, well, you know what this is, don't you? And he said, well, I said, everybody's coming to see Mary. And he said, well, of course they oh. are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to give lots of hugs, that's for sure. <laughs> and, I, and I know God's going to give you a word for everybody, too. We're going. Yeah, he's already sp- talked to me. I'm so excited um, because it's it's a challenge for me to get up in, in front of people. But I, I was thinking here a couple of weeks ago, I thought, I'm not going to let the enemy make me feel like I can't get up and talk in front of people. You know, I've, I found out a lot of it was is, is, you know, when I went to Tennessee that time I got up and talked, it wasn't nervous, wasn't anything, but it was a group of people that I'd never been around. And in my familiar space where I was raised, it was just so awful to to stand up in front of people. But but I'm I'm going to be surrounded by well, people I love. And every, so everybody was critical back then too of everything. It's like nobody could do anything right. And so so I am I'm looking forward to it. God's already putting in my heart some of the things He wants me to talk about, and that's that's what I'm looking for. I mean, I don't want to get up there and just talk and not have a an anointed word from God. So um, I'm thinking if He's starting with me, I know He's given you and um our guest speaker uh, dr Mike spaulding, spaulding yeah. um a word and i i'm just really excited guys and it's it's hard for me i mean we have to face what's going on around us because um it's even even the the rain we had to really pray some rain in here this last and last weekend it took it, a lot of prayer to get a half inch in <laughs> well i mean it was like having faith like Elijah, seeing a cloud way off. It has been incredibly hot here in the Ozarks since June. Yeah. And it, it, it and this week is going to be like the regular temperature, 102, 103. And so, you know, the heat is index. really abnormal. It is abnormal for here. And uh, I was feeling so bad. I've been leaving water out for the wildlife. I know that sounds crazy. But I was noticing we were having – you know, telltale signs of rabbits really close to the house. And I thought, they've got to be looking for water. So I've been putting things of water out, and then we were headed over to Diggins the other day, and um, I saw a, 
a mama deer walking across. No, it was going to Marshfield. And she we, wasn't. She wasn't. She was not doing well. She was just like she was haggard or something walking across the road, and we got up there, and then there were two little baby fawns, and they ran back. They got scared of the vehicle, but uh, I was just praying and asking God for sure, you know, for for His people that they would have the rain they need and and the farmers. But I started thinking, Father, for your wildlife, we just asked it, and we got we got some decent rain. Yeah, there were a but, couple of places here within. 50 miles they got like three inches so so god's answer he's yeah. hearing our prayers but i feel like there's something else going on with the weather they may have that harp thing out again yeah, scalar because it's on. it feels different it's like you know i can go out in just regular heat and don't and don't feel bad but there was like an oppressive heat it was just horrid the minute you walked outside even, even the sun feels different it's and so crazy. i think that of course we're in the middle of of dog days in the summer when you know has to do with the occult serious they use this time period um you know that's august 6th and 7th i think is tisha yeah. that's always a um time that they they def, defile all those times on the jewish calendar and um i just i think that they're doing something with the weather to, and i think it's in um concert with what they're trying to do to the food yeah, and the, i mean it's, it's it is obvious reset. with the with the things that have happened with the the plants the food plants where they're burning and it a, actually it is so um out there that they're overplaying their hand. Yeah, I mean, I think just an average person that doesn't listen to the, you know, the um, kind of sites that we listen to to get news, I think they would have to stop and say, "What in the world is going on?" If if anyone is saying that this uh, Biden administration is not a disaster, they're they're in a cloud somewhere. They're uh, not. It, it's either. Uh, incompetence that will go down in the history books as the fumble of, of all fumbles, or uh, we have communists that are orchestrating all this for a purpose. It's either on purpose or just they, 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 were, they were saying, okay, this person fits this social agenda, so we're going to put them in there, and they had no expertise whatsoever. Well, because it, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. They're lockstep with this agenda. Yeah. To, to just, you know, make people eat bugs and get rid of the cattle. And it's just, it's a horrible thing, you know, when you read the what the whistleblowers are, are telling about what they have, have planned. And it's, they're just continuing on. We would be in far worse shape had Hillary won the election yes. um, in 16 because... I mean, they, they, they had it all planned to flow with her and, and had it all laid out, and so that was a huge upset. But they're trying with it all their might to try to get this going, and, and I, I just, I'll tell you what just comes up in my spirit every time I think about it, because if you listen to it, um, they're trying with all their heart to, to start World War III. Yeah. I mean, they are just dogged determined that they're going to do something to make Russia fight the United States, and there's there's no other explanation for it but God. Yeah. And and God is the one that can stop that. And when you when you look at the push that the EU is doing specifically against that, they're they're slitting their own throats as far as power because they get all their their heating oil or their their heating gas, I think it's natural gas that is, is the primary thing that not only for homes but for all their factories and everything all comes from Russia. And so Russia's just simply turned off the spigot, if you will. And it, it's like, okay, we're just going to let all of our people starve to death because we have decided that we're going to go this direction. And uh, it's, 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 they're, they're fomenting in it. In fact, yesterday it came out in the news that they said, listen, even if Ukraine works out a, a peace plan with Russia, but it, it's in favor of Russia, we're not going to go buy it. Well, I didn't. I didn't realize Europe was at war with Russia. So why, you know, there's there there is an agenda. Yeah, there is. And I, I think what Clear we need to anything. begin doing is praying that God would tear apart their agenda. And it and it's going to take God's mercy. Yes. Because we are already set up for judgment, and yes. and I think what the Supreme Court decided there are things that that give you great hope that God's going to turn some things around. But, I mean, there, there's no way there's not some bad yeah. things going to happen yeah. because of all of the innocent blood that's been shed. But I know this. God hears our cry for mercy. And not not just for 
uh, continued existence or that we'd all have all the amenities that we enjoy for his purpose. Exactly. For great uh, the revival. more I, I hear, the more I hear other preachers talking about what's going on, I, I'm telling you, there is such a work to do. Not only do we have this end time harvest to, to bring in, and there will be an end time harvest, but you have to have churches ready to take the harvest in, and the church people are in such trouble. You know, one of the things that I think we're in a position right now to do, guys, we need to get 90% of the church saved. They're not saved. They're not. And they don't we believe well, the word of God. You can be mad at us for saying it, but I am telling you, they're not. They're not <laughs> saved. We need to get a lot of preachers saved because they think that the word of God is nothing more than fables. There's not a fable there anywhere. It, it is the written and errant word of God. They're changing the word to meet social agendas. Let me tell you something. You don't change the word. The word changes you. And the minute you make it anything else than that, you're not dealing with the word of God. Well, and it, I, it goes back to what I wanted to talk about today, what God was talking to me about keys. <clears throat> and, you know, like in among Lucifer's minions, there are gatekeepers and key master demons. Mm -hmm. and, and this is involved in mind control but it, that's just what their role is and what they try to do is to take god's people and boy have they done a whale of a job at this over the last decades try to get you to open enough doors illegal doors to where you're you're not following god's word they want you to open those doors so they can attack they can influence they can destroy that's yes. their goal and, and the Bible says without a cause, a, a curse cannot light. But if you're violating the word of God, you just created a cause. Mm -hmm. And that, that's something that we, have, we haven't realized. We go around, and, and Mary, I remember years ago, everybody says, you know, Christian can't be cursed, Christian can't be cursed. while well, their lives were falling apart. And no, if, 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 if you're seeing stuff like this land, then you need to stop back and say, okay, where have I created an open door? That's one of the things that we've been teaching everybody forever. Or where has it been created for you? Yes. Maybe by past generations. I, you know, my heart goes out so much to Freemasons and their descendants. The vast majority of Freemasons just think it's a good organization. They don't read the materials. They take the oaths, which they don't think really means because anything. Because they're always promised a job if you're a Mason. Right, and it's it's just good business. Yeah. You know, you're, you're going to support your, your fellow Freemasons, and so it's it's a, a good way to build a business or um, and, and the good work that they do with children. You yeah. know, there's so many things, but I have never seen such devastation in my life. It is um, a similar devastation over and over and over. It's attacks on children's spines. Uh, it's it's just over and over. And I especially if you have a generation that decides to really follow God, that's mm -hmm. when all hell breaks loose. Yeah, and unless unless this is a trigger, I don't know about. Like sometimes they do things to trigger people. You know, if they had mind control done but i i think i'm going to start taking my keychain and shaking those keys to remind the kingdom of darkness yes who's got the keys because you know satan can cause you to open a door he can deceive you there can be a door open for you through generational things and we got to remind the devil Who's got the keys? You know, we believe that when when Jesus, there's, there's teachings that um, Jesus went to hell when he died and then before he rose and, and the demons beat him up and things like that. Mm -mm. See, we don't believe that. No, we, he, he went down there and beat them up. He made an open show with them. And and so we believe that he he said, I got the keys. Yep. <laughs> and and when he did that, when through his death, burial, and resurrection, he made the way for any door that's been opened to the enemy to be closed. Yes. And, and locked. And it's, you know, never to be opened that, again. That's why, that's why, you know, repentance, returning back to the Word of God is so important. But, guys, we need to understand the reason that they're fighting so hard to try to keep abortion in America has nothing to do with reproductive health. It had, that, that, that is the veneer that they sell the public, okay? Mm -hmm. It is opening up spiritual doors through the sacrifice of those children. And let me tell you, that's, that's when America really got in trouble. We've always had the, the elite building things in America, you know, uh, building to this point, actually. It's all been a slow process to, to take the nation. Um, but 
there's there's nothing compared to the decades after abortion was legalized. Mm-hmm. No, and and that whole era of sex, drugs, rock and roll, where free love was you know before people, it was it, it just wasn't a good thing to yeah. to sleep outside of marriage, and that was that was the norm at that time. Um, now find somebody now, that's true to marriage is almost, is almost a rarity. Well, when I left high school and went to work, they laughed at you. I yeah. got laughed at in those early days um, because I, well, I the, just... When you understand the dynamics of it, the 1960s was a satanic rebel mm-hmm. that opened up the gates of hell. And, on the, and so there, there was the sex revolution, and, and when you look at the rock and roll revolution, uh, and there's a, there's a great three-hour video out there on that, that most of these guys that were the basis for the rock and roll movement were all disciples of Ali Esther Crowley. And so the, with what they loosed, it's time for it to shut. Well, that's it. And that's, that's what, you know, um, I've talked to a lot of survivors of satanic ritual abuse, and almost all of them uh, have a really hard time with the concept of the blood of Jesus, and that's because it's been defiled to them. A lot of blood rituals and things, and it's understandably, they, they would have a hard time with a blood issue. And what I've always tried to tell them is, don't look at it as, um, don't focus on the blood. Think of the power that Jesus loosed when his blood was shed. Just look at it as the power toward victory that he purchased with his blood. Yes. You don't have to look at you know actual blood, but look at look at what he purchased for us, and gave us his authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and um, that's that would be my goal. If if um, somebody wanted to know, okay, Mary, how would you get free? My goal would be to teach them how God taught me binding and loosing in my authority, um, and man, did that just open it and and. It was such, it so rocked the kingdom of darkness that they immediately came after me. You know, that's how you know that your prayers are making a difference and what you're saying is making a difference. Uh, you're not supposed to walk out of this stuff. You're not, this nation, it was never supposed to come out of mind control. No. It is supposed to just get worse and worse and worse. And I can tell you, God's raising up a remnant that says no mind control. There's things I've heard of here lately. I, I can't even put it together yet. I know it's got to do with Druidism. Uh, but I've got to to do some research and figure out how did that get done, because whatever whatever they've done, we've we've got authority over. We don't oh, have to put up with witchcraft in our cities. We don't have to put up uh, with Satanism or Druidism or any of that stuff. Well, we more, we can shut down the power. Sorry. The more free you get, the more ridiculous. I mean, the mind control has, and 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 guys are level of uh, there's levels of mind control there can be a lot of mind control that has nothing to do with trauma based mind control it's the stuff they're doing with society it's the stuff they're doing through programming you through education and all these different things mary it has gotten so ridiculous i don't know how that the newscasters can keep a straight face as they read some of this stuff it's because they're getting paid to it's got to be because because it's got to the place it's ridiculous and anybody that's saying it looks ridiculous yeah. i wouldn't want to look ridiculous if somebody told me to report on something that was that obvious yeah. i'd just say well i'm gonna have to quit <laughs> you know one of, one of my favorite political ads is by a guy that's he's in the navy here locally and and he says things have gone crazy he <laughs> said if you if you believe that uh that uh, we need to have borders that call you racist they believe that if you think there's uh, that there's more than male and female they think you're stupid and he said what a bunch of dumb bleeps <laughs> and i thought Guy, you're, you're you're expressing what ninety percent of yeah. America thinks. He, he said, "If you're if you believe there's just two genders, sex, genders, yeah, male and female, they say you're stupid." Yeah, he said it the other way, but it that's what he was he was saying. But it's like, yeah, I I, I think that it's it's gone to the place where you have to be so stuck on stupid. But it, you see, that's the 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 principalities and powers. The kingdom of darkness operates in the level of the soul. The Bible says Satan blinds the minds. He blinds, he, he, he causes them to, to run after anything but truth. And, and right, you know, the, the truth is there, there are two sexes. It's established in the word of God because it's established in the word of God. The kingdom of darkness is against it. If, if, if anything that, that we're, we're in a society right now that has, that has embraced what was called denialism, 
and it goes back to, to Jacob Frank, uh, that he was a false messiah, goes right into Illuminati and everything else. This this burn everything down, just destroy everything. Well, what they want to do is strip America of our Judeo-Christian ethic and our heritage that we had was the only thing that was a foundation that even Mary, even the founders, even the founders that were Masons understood that if it hadn't been for the revivals of Jonathan Edwards and many of the others, they had they had nothing to put a republic on. It was what God had done. And so if you pull, the Bible says that if the foundations be removed, what can the righteous do? Well, that's it. And so guys, this this is a time to say, you know what? I'm closing the doors in my life. Now, once you get the doors closed in your life, then, guys, we can stand as the remnant and begin praying for the portals and the doors the enemy has opened through abortion and all these things because the kingdom of darkness and the priesthood of darkness has been laboring for centuries to get the portals open that they have open right now. That's it. And the only ones that can stop them is when the remnant begins to stand up in their authority and begins to bind those things and begins to seek heaven and say, Jesus, you got yep. the keys. And we're, we're standing in faith that what doors we can't close, you can. That's right. That's right. And, and I believe with all my heart that there are angels coming to earth that have never even been here before. Yes. That have been prepared for this time to help us. You know, we were talking last podcast about um, you were saying how in the Roman soldiers had the spikes in their, their shoes. and The, the spikes and the, on the end of their shields. And the the shields hooked together yep. and you know you you need somebody that's playing a drum remember how the, those movies where they have all the the slaves in the bottom of the boat and they're beating a drum and they have to Rowing do the sequence. roars and sequence we could do that as the remnant we step together we push those shields forward and we say go it's Press. time to take ground. It's time to take it back. And that's that's I am hearing other people say what's been in my heart all along take america back we don't have to follow what the elite has planned no we don't it, i don't believe it's god's plan that we're supposed to go under when it's going to look like the what used to be uh and still will be someday the the christian nation is going to go under doesn't that look like satan wins yeah doesn't that look like oh wow there's so, there's so much more power it's time for us to stand up and say we're going to close every door in our lives. We're going to get our vessels to where we can flow freely with the, the moving of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And we're going to see the heavens quake and the earth shake with the power of God. Not anything to do with us, just us emptying our vessels out, say, decrease, decrease, Father, increase in me. When Barack Obama on the international scene as president said that America was no longer a Christian nation. What I have begun praying ever since then was God make him a liar. Well, we just cover his words with the blood yes. of Jesus and cancel them out. Yes. Because a lot of what's going on is what we've been taught to say. We've been taught to say the wrong things. And I'm not one of these people that, oh my goodness, you, you have to watch every word you say and things like that. But it's very important we we declare the word of God. We declare what God has planned, not the enemy. You know, it's taken me years to get out of that way that our family talked. Our family talked our defeat, yeah. talked our bondage. We we just reinforced it with our words. And that's that's one of the things that we can open a door with is what we say. Yeah, because it gives the demons right. Okay, that's that's what you said. That's what you believe. I'll go to work. And and then we weren't taught that that if you're a Christian, you can be in bondage. It's just everybody taught you you're a Christian now. Everything's rosy. Satan can't touch you. It's not true. And and Jesus no. paid the price for us to be totally free. That's that's what Jesus intended when he did all of that. But it's not automatic. Sanctification is a process, and, and we're not taught the minute you get saved, okay, you're going to have a battle. Yeah. And nobody's prepared for the battle. I had no clue uh, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit what was waiting for me, even at my own house, because it, it had to shake everything that was going on in our family. And I am telling you, my dad went to work uh, <clears throat> to tear everything to pieces in it. And so if, if I'd had any preparation... And had any, you know, I was just a kid then. But boy, can I see, I can look back and see, boy, the Satan was trying to stop this here, trying to discourage me here. And then, um, you know, I, where I lived, it was just automatic. Okay, you're going to get out of high school. You got to work at Fort Leonard, but that's what, that's what you have to do. And what a 
den of iniquity I walked into. It was bad enough where I was raised, and and I have no doubt at this point that was a, a test site for mind control. But when I walked into that place, I I had no clue consciously of what what I was getting into. The mm. It, it was just, I, I don't think all military bases are like that. Either. I think it's because of the infiltration of the occult. But it was like adultery city. Yeah. <laughs> That's all and I know how to there, describe there's a, it. There's a certain level of that that goes on at all military bases, but it was on steroids oh, down there. Oh, my word. And so um, I, I'm so excited about what I believe God's getting ready to do because I believe he's raising up the younger people, younger than us, that will have strength that are going to be able to take information that we didn't have when we were young and just go forward like that, those soldiers we were talking about, to take the land, to, to you know I- issue a decree, have their doors covered to where the backlash is not something they can't handle, and to go forward and say, we're taking the nation back, we're taking the cities back. Yes. And, and we're, we're starting in that process. That's why the elite are going so nuts. There's more going wrong in the kingdom of darkness than you know. There's more fallen than you know. Yeah, and the more remnant wake up, the harder time they That's have. That's right. And it, and it doesn't take the majority to do it. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. You can take a, a room full of, of Christians praying and move a mountain. Absolutely. And so, so wait till you see what God's getting ready to do. And, and see, we won't be in this battle alone. It looks rough right now. You know, the inflation's soaring. I... I heard a uh, talk the other day, and they were talking about there was a man in Florida. I think he had five kids or something, and his normal food budget was four hundred dollars, and and it had risen to five hundred, almost six hundred, and that's what I'm seeing in the stores when I go. This um, this is a time for the church to shine, because we can help the poor. We can help those that families that are struggling to to put food on the table. See, I'm not I'm not discouraged. I'm not sitting here in a panic thinking, oh, what are we going to do? I'm thinking, God, I'll match my faith with everything you want to do. And if you if you're going to supernaturally put food on the table, I'm with it. We're going to get ready. We're going to go, and and we can overcome. We can overcome this. And I, I think in the days ahead, Mary, with with whatever our gifting is. You know, some are, are gifted in building, some are gift, gifted in planting and different things. I'm looking for a fresh anointing to come on them that whatever that area just causes it to excel. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I remember uh, Charlie and Dorothy back years ago when we were uh, at Santee. And I mean... Gardeners, gardeners extraordinaire. I, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, these, these little old guy, you know, little old man and woman, and they were they're in their 70s. 60s and 70s back then, and probably older. I'm sometimes. I old. don't know if they're still alive or not. We'd no, but I mean, they they would they would garden. I, I think his garden was like three and a half acres. <laughs> and uh, I, re- I remember, you know, pastoring there when when it, when it came harvest time. Every time yeah, we, they were so sweet. Every every time we would uh, go back into the to get in our car to go home after church, the the back of the car was filled yeah. with produce. So sweet, and uh, and so you know when you. And it's it's like God would always just almost supernaturally bless his harvest, and uh, see that's that's what I'm expecting for believers that that have that gifting and they're doing it for God to so bless their harvest that there's more than enough for their family where they can give. And it's almost like that old that commercial from one of those companies that make the seeds, and he says, "Now that I'm older, I'm I'm realizing why Dad made so much and and grew so much. It was so that he could give away so much." Yeah. And I, I think we're going to see that. I, I think we're going to begin seeing places to where uh, Christians begin banding together to make our own uh, way of living to where we can barter and stuff. And some are going to be gifted in cattle. Some are going to be gifted in, in, in growing. Some are going to be gifted in building and, and are, are being able to fix stuff. I mean, that's, that's going to be crucial in the days ahead. It is. But I but that's the way that we're we're supposed to have a community of believers. Yes, and we work together. And uh, I I am determined we're going to see it. Yes, I mean we've got people that are are here with us now that we love like family, uh, and so we can all work together. And that's that's when to me it's such a joyous gathering. 
Yeah, it's when you just got people around that that you're all uh, working together and and getting stuff done, doing what God tells us to do. To me, that is something I am so looking forward to that. I can't tell you. And at the same time, I know that God is going to give us messages for that conference center that are going to change lives. Change lives That's yeah. what I, I mean, I'm praying every day. We're going to fast and pray. We're going to see lives changed and never be the same. Yeah. You know, when we were in ministry years ago, when you pastored and we had a, the little church, we people came. I, I couldn't understand it. Like when we were going to church, even when you weren't pastoring, you'd have people get up and they go to the altar and everybody's praying for them and everything. And then they get up and nothing changes. And I, I used to, even in my depressed and sad state, I'd think, man, this needs to be different. We need to be able to go to the altar and pray and, and change. But I had no clue what we were living in yeah. the middle of. Well, you, you also need, you need not only prayer, you need action. I mean, when mm-hmm. you're, when you're repenting, closing doors, beginning to do the things that you had never been taught to do because mm-hmm. of, you know in the word all those actions combined begin to they begin to steamroll the enemy yeah that's right instead of the enemy steamrolling you you're steamrolling the enemy well and when people get saved we need discipleship to where yes. where there's people there that can say when they hit a bump in the road okay let's pray this let's yeah. do this let's ask questions like okay tell me about you know what happened when you were a kid is there anybody in your family a free those those are the questions that you can break down years yeah. and years of what the enemy's built in a day and i i even think the way that we lead people to jesus is not this 30 second prayer it's it's okay uh, you want to come to jesus okay let me let me uh, get part of the prayer and i think we almost need to go to, to that nehemiah prayer in nehemiah one lord forgive me of my sins and the sins of my forefathers. Mm-hmm. Let's go ahead and let's let's go ahead when you get saved. Let's get that. Let's renounce Satan. Let's let's yeah. get all that done at one time yep. to give to give a true clean slate for that person to move forward. That's right. And so uh, there there almost needs to be a almost a discipleship dynamic at the altar instead of saying let's pray this thirty second prayer so that we can do another notch in our belt saying oh mm-hmm. we got another one saved yeah but did you get them completely free did you get them completely clean well and and I I personally believe that God can rewire our minds absolutely you know that there's been neural pathways opened and Satan's used it I think he's done it through video games I think he's done it to a degree through watching the TV if you get zoned out but I I am a believer that he can do anything that was one of the things that i think aided in my healing is i totally trust him that no matter what was done to my mind what that that he was well able to set me free that every spirit that was attached to me had to go that that my mind could be rewired whatever he needed to do and and still maintain who he uh, he designed me to be. Well, the, the sanctification process it ha- has two different levels. It's two different sides of the coin. One of them, as you grow in the word, you begin to see more things to repent of, bring out of the blood and different things. The other side of it is as you meditate on the word and begin praying, the combination of prayer and study begins rewiring your brain. And it, and it takes about three years for that sanctification process when you do it right to work out. But when, when you do at the end of that three years, the devil didn't wire your brain anymore. Now the Holy Spirit has rewired That's your it. brain. You think different. You feel different. That's right. You perceive reality differently because you're no longer seeing it the way through the glasses that Mystery Babylon gave you. You're not thinking the way that Mystery Babylon taught you you've been set free of that now you're beginning to see through the eyes of jesus you're beginning to thank the word of god you're beginning to thank in line with heaven right. and when you think in line with heaven and you see from heaven's perspective i tell you what it puts you into a place where you can begin flowing with heaven's power that's it and you know we the bible says we have the mind of christ yes he paid the price for us to have clarity of thought, yes. the ability to perceive his word, to, to flow with his kingdom. And what so what's Satan done? He has, has devised a plan that he thought was unstoppable, that he was going to rewire people's brains. He was going to use technology. He was going to use uh, demonic Culture, power. education, and, and everything else. And just make us yeah. a mess to where we couldn't have the mind of Christ. You can't have the mind of Christ if you've got a throne established to the kingdom of darkness in your mind. And they, they, they actually set up things in your mind that it would be impossible for you to flow with the kingdom of God if that thing stand it. The trouble is nobody even knows it's there. That's that's why it's so important to guard your your eyes and your ears, to to ask God to apply the blood of Jesus there. Because it'll be a screen to, if you're watching TV and there's a subliminal coming, um, 
you know, we watched a, a YouTube video of a, a preacher the other day, and they had a little person down in the corner moving their mouth like they were wasn't signing or anything like that, just moving their mouth. And I thought they could be speaking anything. And then in the background, they had like shadows of things. And I thought they're trying to defile this thing. Yeah, because it wasn't his ministry that posted. No, it it. They wasn't had at took all. one of his videos uh-huh. and they put all this junk in there. And I told Mary, they I even said, put a put a little picture down at the bottom of somebody uh, bound down to Allah. And I yeah. thought, I thought, boy, there. Are j-. And let me tell you something. When they start doing this, they're scared. Oh, they're scared. Yeah. They're scared. And there's nothing I love more than the kingdom of darkness getting scared and fleeing. Yep. Because it means God's on the move. And we're going to move with him. We're going to see miracles. We're going to see things like we had only dreamed of. And what he was preaching was great. And what I ended it up was. doing is I quit looking at the TV screen, started doing other stuff around yeah, the house where I could listen. just listen to his preaching. I do that a lot anyway. Yeah. I just listen while I'm doing things. So, But, but guys, just... Keep your hopes up. You know, I know the news is bad, but God's working. The reason this is going this way is he is exposing everything. There's a lot of uh, corruption in Ukraine. Yes. There's a lot of bad things that have went on there. They're they're in bad shape morally, like we have been. Before before this conflict started, there was and it was it was I forgot something the great that was really big in that area. Uh, there was a female. And they they were getting ready their parliament to pass less legislation to replace that statue with a woman that's a porn star. Well, there's they, there's a lot of things it's, it's, that, it's are, crazy that are stuff going on being questioned right now. Yeah. But we just keep on, Father. You have a perfect plan. You have a perfect plan for America. You've got a perfect plan for Russia and Ukraine. Uh, we we believe that that you are gonna. Put an end to this this war. Yes, it's not time for it. We've got a job to do, and nobody's going to convince me that God's not going to give us all time to do it. If if Jesus came back tomorrow, what in the world would it be? And Absolutely. so, and and I say Jesus come quickly every day. I I can't wait till that happens. But I don't want to leave here before God gets done what he wants us to do well there's you know there's you can have and this this is very hebraic you can almost have two conflicting things that are in dynamic tension one of them is i want jesus to come back quickly the second one is i want the church to be ready and i yep. want it that with a be without spot and a wrinkle or any such thing yep. as as a bride prepared for the bridegroom as well as he deserves the greatest harvest and right now in the earth with everything that's going on and the number of people. Did you know right now if revival broke out that we could have more people saved in this generation that has ever been saved from from uh, the book of Acts to today? That's a great harvest that Jesus deserves. Yeah, he deserves it. And, he and, paid you know, the, the price for part, it. Part of the, the, the uh, uh, Moravian uh, revival that they had was their prayer was, Lord, May the lamb receive the reward of his suffering. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember there was the this, this story of this one man that literally there was an island that was, that was full of slaves that they wanted to have an outreach there. And you couldn't get on that island unless you were a slave. The young man sold himself into slavery. And as he got on that boat, his family was in tears praying, may the lamb receive the reward of his suffering. He went on that island and led all those slaves to Jesus. There are slaves to sin all around us. Now, some yeah. of them have power. Some of them are in political positions. Some of them are in industrial positions. But what they don't know is that they are slaves, they and they're are. bound to, to, to split hell wide open when they, when they die. They're slaves to sin, totally blinded to the truth. Something so obvious to me, they just are oblivious to. And so we've got to pray that the scales fall off of yes. eyes. I am... I am sure that we are going to see people in high positions fall on their face and bow before yes. god there's two things i want to see for the lord comes back number one is a great revival where we see the lost saved the second one is a revival in the church and, and uh, i and some ministers were talking the other day and they they say you know when you really start hitting what the word says they said you know what we have discovered is the center will look there and say that's interesting it said it's the so-called saints that get mad is the quickest because they're Laodicean saints. 
don't don't rock the boat don't 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 knock me out of my ease because I'm at ease in Zion what they don't know is a lot of them aren't saved they have they have uh they're pretending to be godly but they're denying the power thereof well you can't you can't be following a Jesus that is not in accordance with the word that's not the real Jesus no. so if you're following him if you've accepted him as Lord you're not saved no. So much of the church is guilty of idolatry because we have created a Jesus that will accommodate our flesh Boy, isn't and that not being the, the Jesus that we see in the Word of totally God. Totally leave out the holiness of God. Yes. I saw something the other day I about fell over. <laughs> it was a, a woman that claims to be a prophetess, and she had on a – she popped up on the the side, you know, when you go on to watch something pop and she had on a T-shirt. And it had Santa Claus over the top of Jesus sitting down giving him bunny ears. Like they're doing a selfie type of thing. And and I think the the thing was, you know, uh like Jesus is your friend and um but that Santa Claus is Odin. Odin. Yeah. <laughs> and Guys, we, we, we have lost our reverence for God. <sighs> but when he comes back He's coming back, and he said, "He said, be thou holy as I am holy. No man will see God without holiness. All these different things are in the word of God. And Jesus is coming back, not as Messiah ben Joseph. He's coming back as Messiah ben David. There's a transition. And so much of the church, in fact, we have so distorted, because this, even this, this Jesus of love that we see in the New Testament, he cleared out the money changers twice, okay? He... He looked at the, the religious leaders of that day, and he had these words of love for them, you bunch of snakes and vipers, okay? When he, and he said, listen, I did not come to the world this time to judge the world. That's the next time. Right. And he's coming back not to extend grace but to execute judgment. He went to the sinners in bondage yes. and showed them absolute love. He did, and you know what? There was, there was an air of authority around him. He could go in the midst of sinners, and they would quit sinning, and they sat down and listened to him, and their lives began to change. But he he got angry with the religious leaders yes. that that were taking people away, and and we got a bunch of them today. Yes, we got a bunch of them today that it would it would not be a, a good conversation with Jesus. Oh no, it won't, because he would say, "You are leading my sheep astray." Yes. And we're supposed to, if, if you're in the ministry, you're supposed to be loving on people, getting them out of bondage, um, trying with all your heart to seek God, to see things you don't even understand. Because there's, there's a lot been done, let me tell you, a lot been loosed in the last decades in the kingdom of darkness. It's not a simple thing anymore to just say, oh, you, you need deliverance. <laughs> it's not that simple. But with God, with the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, revelation, and might, we can, we can see people set free. Yes. Spirit, soul, and body. Baby. That's right. Sanctified, holy. And that's 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 where we're heading, and I will I will not accept anything less. And once all of us guys determine in our heart, we will accept nothing less than holiness, the fire of God, living biblically, seeing revival, seeing the power of God. I don't want gimmicks. I mm -mm. don't want none of this junk. I, no. I want the real. We want real praise and worship. Real praise, Real and, praise worship. and worship where people are lifting their hands. You know, that's that's a breakthrough right there. If you've been in churches and you've not been taught to lift your hands, you know, God gave me a, a song one time, and it was lift your hands, your unshackled hands. Yeah. And that's because you're that's, free to do it. That's right, and that's that's symbolism to to the kingdom of darkness. I'm free. I've been bought and paid for. Yeah. Even the instruction of the Apostle Paul, he said, I would that men everywhere would pray with, up, with lifting up holy hands. And guys, when we, when we pray and when we worship because, and we realize it's not about us, that praise and worship service is not about making you feel good. No. It's about making the creator of the universe that's, welcomed. That's right. And honoring that him. And honoring him. We're going to see comes it. Down. Yes, We're we are. We're going to see it. Guys, I'm excited. We guys, love you guys so much. Do. Can't wait to see. <laughs> let's let's keep raising the standard until it lines up with yeah, the word of God. I'm telling you, you know, Steph's a, a 
she's an even keel person. She she doesn't get excited sometimes about things. She is so excited about the conference and getting to see the friends that she's made. Um, it's it's just something to see. <laughs> it's going to be exciting, guys. And for those of you that uh, are just listening by audio, you need to go and watch the video because as soon as this ends, we're gonna we're gonna have the video. Uh, it's about ten minutes long of the walkthrough of how things yeah. are shaping up over there. And I didn't want to make you stop watching it, or I would have sung, "Look what the Lord has done." <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, we're excited and we're looking so forward to seeing our partners and friends in October. And uh, guys, guys, just keep this in prayer. And for those of you who can't come, as soon as we're going to have everything yep. set up, get to and uh, watch it. if they can get it all done. We're good. We're in, I've, I've already got backup. I've actually bought a piece of equipment to add to what they're going to do so that at least we can get the audio. But uh, my, our, our prayer we'll is get we get the video, the video too. That's right. So you guys can and watch it. We're going to get all that posted home. on the internet so that you guys can be a part of it wherever you are. We love you. And Father, we just ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would loose an anointing, Father, the anointing of an overcomer. Father, let us shake off the shackles of Babylon. Let us shake off the filth of Babylon. Father, let us lay aside every weight that so easily besets us. And let's pick up that cross and walk in victory in Jesus' name. Hello, everybody. We're at, uh, we're at the Diggins Complex. And before we go into the fellowship hall, I want to show you what it looked like uh, before the crew started from one of our earlier films. Uh, as you can see, the damage from the smoke when they had the fire here. Uh, we're going to get that taken care of. We're going to have the uh, walls raised up to 11 feet and then the drop ceiling put in uh, to get that looking really nice. And now we're getting ready to go in. And as you can see, it looks like a completely different building. And we've begun putting up tables and, and different things. We need to still order, what, about another 14 tables and 160 chairs so that we can seat everybody uh, when they eat here uh, for our conference. And we're gonna go in here. We also have an overflow room here on the side that uh, when we're not having conferences, we can use as a classroom or something. Uh, we've got a lot of things planned for the future. And we've not really begun decorating it yet. We just brought some things over from the Seymour building to show, show you how it's going to look because I want everybody to just feel like they're home. One of the things that we're going to do, we can still, we still have the original tiling here. We've, uh, we've stripped it and tried our best to get it cleaned up. Uh, after the conference, probably in September, we're going to end up putting the exact same flooring that we have in the main hall. And here, when we do that, then everything on the inside's done. And right here is where all kinds of goodies that Mary's going to cook. We're going to have that set up and coffee and different things for the fellowship. Plus, we have a pass-through going into the kitchen for all the wonderful food that Mary's going to fix. That's what's going to come out. In here... Um we put the round tables. I thought that was going to look really nice in here. And we're still going to get two more we can fit here yeah. and the chairs around it. But just to give you an idea of what we plan on it looking like, that's a great big pantry right behind there, guys. We're going to fill with shelves. And and the kitchen is just kitchen about done. The only thing done. the only thing they've got left to do in here is to test the gas lines, turn on Mary's ovens where she can get to cooking and She's also promised us that are here locally that we're going to get that get some test drives well, on some exactly of the recipes. Well, that's what we're going to do. And they're going to put a stainless steel top on that. I asked him to put a wall there because you could just see the plumbing. And so we're going to be ready to go soon, guys. I'm going to turn around here where everybody can see all your beautiful cabinetry they put in here. Lots of space. This these, is this I'm is so very excited dream kitchen. about about these islands because I I'm at home. The house that we have has very limited counter space, and so there can be lots of pie dough rolled down on these. So I'm so excited. Pie dough and biscuits. Biscuits. Let's go in and on into the auditorium. Uh, we've got some of the chairs in. The company that we got them through 
are due to get another shipment in sometime in the first couple of weeks of August. They've already been ordered and paid for. And so hopefully by the end of August, we're gonna have all the, uh, all the chairs in here to, uh, to seat everybody. We think that if we can really squeeze people in, that we can get what, about 2.30 in here or yeah. so? And let's, let's show them these bathrooms. I just love brand new bathrooms. These look so good, guys. They did such a wonderful job on them. This is the women's bathroom. And the same countertops they used in the kitchen they used in here. And I just absolutely love the faucets. There's plenty of room to get your hands up underneath them to, uh, to wash your hands. We have yeah. automatic soap dispensers, automatic towel dispensers, and brand new stalls, brand new color toilets. And so, of course, the women get the royal treatment. They get, they get four stalls and four sinks. And us guys over here, we get two stalls and two sinks. And this is kind of how it was laid out. Originally. Right yeah, originally. And plus we have the bathrooms at the back of the, uh, the fellowship hall too, which have uh, two places for guys and two places for girls. The only thing left up here really is just they're gonna finish the AV center. Yeah, the AV center uh, right there laying on the floor is the um, ledge that's gonna go across the top of this wall. And then we're going to have a desk going all the way across here and then making an L shape all the way across here. And it's going to take all of that to uh, put in all the AV uh, equipment. Uh, they're scheduled to do that hopefully sometime the 1st of September. And we're originally going to put in one camera, then eventually we're going to upgrade it to two. Show them up there at the front. I thought that yeah. turned out so well. We had originally planned to do. Um, we claimed barn room and we it was just so expensive and we had a couple of these over at the, at the other building that we didn't use and i thought that will look good up there so that made a really pretty backdrop and uh, here in a couple of weeks i'll go ahead and order the pulpit which is going to be glass and black steel and it's really going to look nice or plexiglass and black steel i guess got to bring over the instruments and get all that and then is it the 1st of September that they can bring in all of the audio Yeah, about the 1st of September. And the only reason they're not doing it right now is because some of the equipment is hard to get. And so they said it could, some of the equipment, they said could take up to 24 weeks to get, and we hope that they get it sooner than that. And so I'm going to go up here and kind of turn around the other way. I just absolutely love this flooring. And believe it or not, this is... This is a type of laminate tiling that they said is almost indestructible. And uh, the stuff they put it down with remains sticky forever. So if by chance a tile would ever be damaged, you can actually pop that tile up and stick a brand new one down. And the floors have given us an extra box of these that if we ever need to do that, it's gonna be real simple. Let me turn around here and, and just let you see. I mean, when you look at what this originally looked like, it is an absolutely different building. And we have a small cry room back here if the little babies get restless. And uh, this has four air conditioning units on this side. Each one is, a, a, I think, at least a five ton. So where even if Mary gets all of those ovens fired up and going full blast, we can still keep it cool. And we're so excited about what God's doing. Uh, this, this is what God and all of you guys have done in, in, in giving. And uh, the contractor that God gave us is a believer and he has just done a top notch job on everything that they have done. And is there anything else we need to show them? I think that's it. I think that's it guys. We're just, we can't wait to see everybody in October and hug some necks and we're going to get here and we're going to praise and worship and bring bring the glory of God into this place and the presence of God and and to see God move and to see and the, the minister of the word and I believe it's going to be a word in season mm -hmm. and it's going to empower the remnant. We love you guys and uh, uh, when uh, when September gets around to where it's not 102 degrees outside we're going to do some things on the outside to spruce it up and do a little bit of painting and stuff but uh, I've decided that we're not going to tackle that when it's in the middle of a drought and a heat wave. 
So God bless you guys. We love you. And uh, we're just excited about what God's doing. Hi, friends. Pastor Mike Spalding here to announce the Go Therefore 2022 conference. We are all witnesses to what has happened to America. Wickedness has overwhelmed our land. It is time for the body of Jesus Christ to come together and raise up the banner of our King. Now is the time for the Ecclesia to make our voice heard. We must bind the strong man in order to reclaim our land. Joining us this year to bring this much-needed clarion call are the following speakers. Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, James Spence, founder of Operation Heal America, Dr. John Diamond, host of America Unhinged on Brideon TV, Kenny C., host of The Rock with Kenny C., Derek and Sharon Gilbert, authors and hosts of award-winning programs on Skywatch TV and the PTL Network. Dr. Michael Lake, author of award-winning books, founder of Biblical Life College and Seminary, and host of Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. David Hevner, author, accomplished filmmaker and producer, director of The Last Evangelist TV series. Carl Gallops, senior pastor of Hickory Hammock Baptist Church and a top 60 Amazon best-selling author. Casper McLeod, pastor of Upper Room Fellowship, author, songwriter, guitarist, and portrait artist. Randy Conway, David Paxton, and Rick Hidalgo from the C2K Report. They'll provide a timely teaching on the steps you must take to protect yourself and your family from Babylon. Coach Dave Daubenmeyer from Pass the Salt Ministries. Neil Peterson, pastor of Harvest Revival Center and current candidate for governor of Ohio. Tom Dunn of Through the Black Ministries. And of course, myself, Dr. Mike Spaulding. Registration is now open at the conference website. GoThereforeConference.com GoThereforeConference.com Registration is still only $59. A recommended hotel is the Best Western Dayton Northwest in Englewood. The hotel is a short 20 minutes from the Dayton International Airport and the conference venue. Mention Go Therefore Conference for the special rate of $89. Book your rooms now as they will sell out. Go Therefore 2022 Conference Reclaiming the Land Binding the strong man. I'll see you there. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.